Are you ready? Well, are you ready? <laughs> I didn't hear you. Louder. <laughs> Is this what you want? Say it. I. O. W. F. I O W F Universe. I said. Are you ready? Here we go. We've heard that theme many times now, and we're starting to get sick of it. But look at Luther Majors strolling his way down the ramp with that world title. You either love it or you hate it. I'll let you guys be the judge of that one. The crowd don't seem to like him, and I'm not surprised after he slagged off Liverpool, I think, on his very first appearance. <laughs> After the Battle Royals, anyway. So, he doesn't have many fans here in the IOWF arena, let's be honest. He laughs, he laughs at the audience as he makes his way in. What's, what's he got to say, though? I mean, I know he's got nothing good to say. He's probably just going to be gloating, bragging about his snatched victory. Let's see. When I came out on the second IOWF show and threatened to destroy this company's stocks, you all laughed at me. When I was squashed by the Reaper James Navas at the end of the show, you all said I was a joke. When I climbed the ladder at Genesis to snatch the briefcase from all your favourites, you said it was a fluke. When I told Dio last week to watch his back because I will become IOWF World Champion, you all didn't believe me. Well, guess what? Who's laughing now? Lift title to the crowd. Unfortunately, I can't do that. There is a reason why I'm called Lucky Luther. I'm that lottery ticket you should have done when your numbers come up. I'm that horse you should have bet on that romps home to victory. The crowd are telling them what they think of him. I'm that 10 out of 10 you take home from the nightclub when you were an average 3 out of 10 at best, let's be honest. I've been doing this my whole goddamn life. I scrunch up the odds and use it to wipe my ass with. But let's be honest, I don't expect beta humans such as the IWF universe to understand that. But that's fine. I don't need your support. I don't need anyone's support. I'll carry this company on my back. And do you know what? You hate me, but you'll tune in every week to witness my greatness and sit miserable in your shitty apartments thinking, damn, I wish I was like Luther. But you never will be. You will fail. You will always fail. Harsh words from Luther. Now... Everyone is asking, what kind of champion will Luther Majors be? A lot smarter than Dio ever was, that's for damn sure. <laughs> but also, I'm going to be benevolent. That is why tonight I'm offering an opportunity of a lifetime for two IOWF wrestlers on the roster. An opportunity to learn from the best and be tutored in the secrets of Lucky Luther. 
I'm looking to hire two wrestlers to become part of my entourage and totally not protect me from other wrestlers on the roster because I can do that myself. Don't all rush at once now. Anyway, I think I've spent long enough in this dump. I've got bitches back at the pad that can't fuck themselves. See you, kids. Oof. Oof. Luther on fine form. And he's given an opportunity to two wrestlers to join him tonight. But who's that going to be? Who, who would even want to join Luther? First match of the evening. Let's get it on. Who have we got first? Introducing first... From Moscow, Russia. <laughs> he is five foot nine, and he weighs in at two hundred and sixty-nine pounds. Who is that from? <laughs> Donaldo. So Donaldo makes his way down to the ring. Donaldo is somebody who performed well in the triple threat match for the European qualifiers, but then made some silly errors. Oh, okay. That's strange. I wonder which one. Do you think it's Dick? Do you think it's Rick Dick? But Donaldo in his toilet roll outfit, people have fondly said he wears toilet roll jacket or a toilet roll jacket. And toilet roll pants as well. It's a very odd shade of, like, mint green, isn't it? Strange, but make no mistake. He's a powerhouse wrestler. And maybe together with Coso, who's also a powerhouse, they've got this one in the bag. Introducing second from Galeen... Netherlands. He's six foot two and he's weighing in at 286 pounds. Kosso! Kosso, the half Albanian, half Dutch wrestler, trying to come off the back of a rap career and combine it with his wrestling. Interesting that there's an Eastern European influence to this team of Donaldo and Coso. That seems to be their reasoning for teaming up. We're going to have to see if that gives them any sort of edge against James Ankrum and Rick Dick. Oh, bit of frame rate issue there. What is going on? Hope that doesn't mean it's going to crash. Hope to God that means it's not going to crash. Yeah, what, what is going on? Okay, introducing next for the first member of the second team from Holt, Huntsville, Alabama. He is five foot six, weighing in at 640 pounds. He's one of the heaviest wrestlers on the roster. It's Rick the Tsunami Dick. Rick Dick makes a slow way down to the ring. Now, you'd be forgiven for thinking... That at 640 pounds, this man would not be a high flyer, but you couldn't be more wrong. Rick Dick is actually one of the main high flyers on the roster up there with Saw and White Angel and actually James Ankrum himself. So this team of him and James Ankrum is a high flying team. So it'll be interesting to see how these two get on tonight. Both high flyers against two powerhouses. Can they win? We'll be finding out very soon. Okay, and the final member of the team, and the final entrant, from Hollywood, USA. He is five foot nine, and he weighs in at 158 pounds. James Ankrum, the stuntman, of course, makes his way and leaps over the top rope. James Ankrum getting an opportunity tonight to join the entourage of Lufa Majors. 
whether you like Lufa or not, it could be a big opportunity. We're about to get going. Let's get it on. I suppose it's hard to know who to root for when they're both in it for selfish reasons. <laughs> Obamania Sais Olifo Quinti Tchum for you live sete trilhões sete centos e setenta e sete bilhões sete centos e setenta e sete milhões sete centos e setenta e sete mil sete centos e setenta e sete. What the hell was that? Uh, Donaldo with a nice uh, sort of follow through neck breaker there to Rick Dick. Rick Dick stands up on the apron. Donaldo looking for support from the crowd, but I don't think he's going to get much of that, considering these both want to help out Rick Dick. He picks up Rick Dick on the outside. Nice clothesline by Rick Dick to take his man down. Kicks to the chest of Donaldo, keeping him down. The referee is at a free count. Picks up Donaldo. Punch to the face. Goes for another punch, but Donaldo stops it. Oh, big slap to the chest. And you don't want a 641-pounder slapping you in the chest like that. At a five count, six count, uh, Rick Dick body slams down. Donaldo to the floor. Oh, Donaldo caught him. That's absolute strength to pick up a 640-pound man like that. He throws Rick Dick back into the ring. No count out here. We got to an eight count. Went for a Russian leg sweep, but then was sort of a fake Russian leg sweep and went to a face plant instead. Now he works the uh, head of Rick Dick, takes him over to the corner, goes for the tag, and now Coso sees his first action in the match. Nice tag team action here from Coso and Donaldo, lifting that 640 pound man into the air. That's not an easy task. Coso goes to work on the neck of Rick Dick. And I think it's fair to say Rick Dick needs to make a tag here because this isn't going well for him. Irish whip into his own corner. Big knee to the chest. Takes down Rick Dick to the floor. Oh, look at that. Brutally just brushing the sole of his shoe across the face of Rick Dick. Irish whip off the rope. Oh, Rick uh, Coso went for something, but he got away with it. Carries him over to the corner pad and now just slams the head of Rick Dick off the turnbuckle pad. I think that was about 10 times. Rick Dick is in trouble here. He needs to get to a tag because the team of Coso and Donaldo working well together. Works on the leg of Rick Dick twice. Helicopter over the arena at. Oh, the helicopter didn't work, Sean. <laughs> oh, no. Back body drop to Coso. Now he's got him in a sort of a cross face type move with a knee to the back. This could be what Rick Dick needs. Oh, nice drop kick there. Or Enzigori, I think it was, to Rick Dick. And Rick Dick goes to the floor. Coso picks up Rick Dick. Nice right hand there. Now he has him behind him and he goes for the Colas. That's a signature move. I think it's the JV. And now he pins him. One, two. Rick Dick had to kick out. James Ancrum didn't get over there in time. Kick to the back of Rick Dick. Coso with a nice stinger style DDT. Rick Dick is getting absolutely hammered. And now Coso is setting up for a finisher. He's twists round Rick Dick, puts him in the tombstone, and he's Cena made him bleed as the Coso crusher. Commentary. One, two. James Ancrum breaks it up, but the referee is down. Coso with a big right hand takes James Ancrum down to the arena floor. The referee is down. And meanwhile, Coso works the neck of Rick Dick. Will there be any foul play here? I mean, they don't look like they're going to do anything. Oh, James Ancrum went to grab the legs of Coso and distracted him. But Rick Dick is in a bad way. He's bleeding. He's swaying everywhere in the middle of the ring. Wait, did we get an ASMR card? I did not see it. I'm sorry. Did we actually... 
You're going to have to confirm it. <laughs> Irish whip into the corner by Donaldo. Okay, wait, wait. Rick Dick stomps to the chest of Donaldo. He tags in James Ankrum. Stomps to the chest of Donaldo. Picks up Donaldo. Irish whip into the corner and he's missed. He's missed. Now James Ankrum goes to the top rope. It's a nice. Uh, don't even know what that move is called. Now James Ankrum is setting up for a finisher. I thought he was. Now he taunts to the crowd, trying to get the crowd support. Picks up Donaldo. Now, oh, nice moonsault off the springboard. Uh oh, I think I know what James Ankrum is going for. He's going for the elbow drop. Big elbow drop to the chest of Donaldo. The Ankrum elbow drop, that move is called. <laughs> Irish whip to the corner. Donaldo reversed. <laughs> or maybe we should whisper instead and do it like that. James Ankrum, 619, Walk of Fame. It's called the Walk of Fame. James Ankrum is on fire. He's doing so much better than Rick Dick and goes for the pin. One, two, three. Wow, James Ankrum. Low key though, James Ankrum has just entered the match and absolutely killed, killed them. What a performance by James Ankrum that was. <laughs> wow. The ma Rick Dick did absolutely nothing and James Ankrum saved the match for them. And now with that victory, James Ankrum and Rick Dick have joined Lufa Majors Entourage. Do you think they're good pickups for Lufa Majors? They look at each other. Van Koso, aka Joshua. They shake hands. Yeah, I mean, now we're going to have to see how this one develops. James Ankrum and Rick Dick joining. Joining Lufa Majors' Entourage. I wonder if Lufa Majors is happy with that, or do you think he would have preferred Donaldo and Coso? I mean, from that performance, James Ankrum, he was insane. He was on fire. He really wanted this opportunity. He hit the 6 1 9 uh, on two big men as well, and like Rick Dick did nothing. He got battered all game. So maybe that's what their game plan is get, let Rick Dick get battered all game, and then James Ankrum comes in and just mops up. <laughs> They couldn't be any more of a weird team as well. Rick Dick is £640. James Ankrum is £158. Wow. Match two of the, this evening. Get your predictions in. Enter in first. We know this entrance by now. From the nearest nightclub. He is six foot two. And he weighs in at 234 pounds. Malcolm Flapjack. Yep, put them kendo sticks away because we know he's allergic to them. But Malcolm entering, trying to get some sort of revenge on Bertie the Bee after the interference in the last match. He gets an opportunity tonight. You don't get the opportunity to wrestle twice on the run in the IOWF often because of the amount of wrestlers on the roster. But he's got an opportunity to teach Bertie a lesson. And of course, introducing second from Burnley, UK. He is six foot seven and weighs in at 350 pounds. Dab on him. It's Bertie 
the bee. A Betty, of course, isn't exactly helping Burnley FC much at the moment. Uh, he was sent here to try and improve the image of Burnley by winning a title, but he's not been able to do that. He came close with the tag titles, but maybe as a singles competitor, he can set that right as he goes up against Malcolm tonight in this match. He takes the top rope. The crowd seemed to like him. Even if it was kind of a cowardly attack last week. I guess he's a mascot, so he's, he's supposed to uh, be good for the crowd. Well, here we go. Get this match on the sh road. Bertie immediately with a sit-out scoop slam to Malcolm. Kick to the back. Now, Bertie with the disrespectful kick to the face after pretending to go for a stomp. Bertie waits for Malcolm to get up. Oh, nice. Enziguri off the ropes there. Malcolm, and then a slide to Malcolm. Malcolm not really getting off to a good start. Bertie takes Malcolm over to the ropes. Irish whip off the ropes. Nice, uh, sort of a... Wait a sec. Wait a sec. Who's this coming in? Oh, come on, not again. Not again. Is that... Is that... Is that music? I think I recognise that music. It's... Oh, come on. It's the Ultra Weeb. But hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. Why is he attacking Bertie? What the hell, Tombstone pile driver to the to oh my god, it's the Sayonara Tombstone to Bertie, and Malcolm goes for the pin. One, two, and he gets a two count on Bertie. He gets a two count on Bertie, but why is the Ultra Weeb attacking Bertie the B? Bertie helped him last week. What is going on? Bertie has shrugged it off as well. Running super kick attempt. Oh, nice. Nice. Uh, I forget what that move's called. To Bertie the B. Sort of like a, a front front zigzag. Now he goes to work on the neck of Bertie the B. This match all of a sudden has swung ground because the Ultra Weeb has interrupted in the match and tombstone Bertie the B. Can Bertie still get the win out of this match? Nice clothesline over the top rope by Malcolm. He goes out, follows Bertie out, picks up Bertie. Went for a punch to the chest, but Bertie fights back. Nice Superman punch style move to Malcolm. Hits him down to the apron. Sorry, not the, the arena floor. Now he launches Malcolm back into the ring. Malcolm stands up. The count has been stopped by the referee. Malcolm went for a behind grab, but Bertie stopped it. And now a Sean Dyche DDT to Malcolm. Takes Malcolm down to the ring floor. One. Two. Malcolm kicks out at two. But considering Malcolm got a helper in hand in this match, he's not really made the most of it. Nice jumping uh, elbow drop. And Bertie with the kip up as well. Now goes to work on the neck of Malcolm. Just squeezing the neck, trying to do some damage to that head and neck area. Picks Malcolm up. Shoulder barge to Bertie, takes Bertie down. Now a nice uh, back body drop. Malcolm fighting his way back out of it, though. And then it is a famouser, a famouser to Bertie and goes for the pin. One. Bertie kicks out at one. Malcolm needs to do some more work on Bertie here. Kick to the legs. But that's not going to be good enough to take this big giant down. And he kips up again, Bertie. Malcolm with a reversal. Bertie goes into the corner but fights his way out. Arm drag. 
but Malcolm reverses the arm drag into a leg sweep. Now he goes for, I think this is a Malcolm move. Nice move there by Malcolm. I think that is a holy driver from Malcolm and he goes for the pin. One, two. Marberti kicks out, but did you see Malcolm's tired? He crawled over to get that pin. I think that was all Malcolm had. I think that was all Malcolm had. And Bertie could finish the job now. Nice reverse power slam there by Bertie the B. And I think he could be going for another Sean Dyche DDT. Malcolm's in big trouble. Malcolm is in big trouble because I know what's coming next. It's the buzz killer. One, two, three. And Bertie the B, even though... Even though he was distracted by the Ultra Weeb in this match, has picked up the victory against Malcolm. Even though Malcolm hit the Holy Driver, he couldn't get the pin because he was already tired. He could only drape an arm over Bertie to try to pin him, but it just wasn't enough. It just wasn't enough. Malcolm really does have to go back to the drawing board now. Bertie the B has put some sort of dominance now over Malcolm. Maybe he was just in his head from last week. There you go. Look, he had to crawl over to Bertie. Drape his arm over him, trying to get that pin in. And it just wasn't enough. Good victory there by Bertie tonight. Bertie's single stock is rising. Big victory for Bertie. Starting off his singles career as a uh, with a big win over Malcolm. And Malcolm, yeah, he's going to have to think a bit harder about what to do next. Because, yeah, it's, uh, it's, not, it's not going well. It's not going well for Malcolm. Introducing first. We've seen this entrance a few times, but this is a big match if they want to stake their claim on the tag division. It's Zinedine Zidane, Wayne Ronnie, the number 10. It's been a while since we've seen the coup de boule, let's be honest. And he'll be needing to hit that tonight if he wants to lead his team to victory. Wayne Ronnie and Zinedine Zidane entering the ring. And if you've ever noticed on their entrance, the hand gestures they do there, that's supposed to symbolize Big Ben and the Eiffel Tower. We made that up. And now the newly formed team of Kofi Kingston Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. What's this music? I've heard this music before. <laughs> oh my god, look at look at them! They got matching outfits and everything! Look at that, look at that walk! <laughs> oh yes, oh yes. I'm looking forward to seeing how this team get on. Ru even Ruben's there with them, and he's supposed to be injured. And it looks like Kofi is the leader. They've all got matte sunglasses as well. Kofi's made them wear red outfits. What a team. <laughs> Immediately, Zidane goes for a pin on Baby Ron. But oh, I, thought, I thought he was going to get pinned then. <laughs> wait, wait, one sec. 
one sec, Tet. Uh, Tet, four. Wait, I did gift you a pack, didn't I? Have I not? Is there not a pack in your thing? Baby Ron. What's he going for here? Oh, oh, that's strength from Baby Ron. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah I'll gift you a pack then. There you go. You might have to refresh it. Might have to refresh it. Hurricane Rana from Zidane to Baby Ron. Baby Ron gets dragged across the apron, uh, the ring floor, and then just a, a, a move over the top on the head of Baby Ron. Now he plays to the crowd. They're not heels anymore <laughs> until, unless they try it again. Zidane going to work on Baby Ron. Baby Ron not getting a lot of offense in. Irish whip into the corner. Now Baby Ron begins to fight his way out. Now he's dragging Zidane over to his own corner. Spins him round, kick to the back. Oh, Meteora from Zidane to Baby Ron takes him down. Kicks to the back of Baby Ron. Baby Ron fights his way out of the attentions of Zidane. Oh, nice. I think he's going for oh, a gut wrench. Gut wrench slam there. Takes down Zidane. Irish whip into the corner. Tags in Kofi. Now we're going to see some of the first tag offense from the shiny bald, bald happy people. Oh, nice power bomb, and then into a pin. That's a nice move by Kofi. Power bomb into a pin. You don't see that very often. Now Kofi. Oh, nice uh, fisherman style suplex there. Tet four Asa thirty five fiasque foy forty one G four S fleet fund dollars five percent. Now Zidane takes over Kofi to his own corner, but he doesn't get very far. Kofi fights his way out. Now Kofi. What's he going for here? Oh, nice suplex there. Sort of like a stolen suplex. Zidane with a kick. Nice. Works the head of Kofi. Kofi now stands his way up. Right hand there by Zidane. I thought Zidane was going for the uh, the coup de boule there, but no. Kofi now, another nice move there. Takes down Zidane. Picks Zidane up. Zidane might need to make a pin to Wayne Ronnie. I don't think Zidane has, has made a tag yet, has he? Nice Falcon Arrow style move to Zidane. Takes him down. Goes for the pin. One. Two. Just broken up by Wayne Ronnie and baby Ron just absolutely taken down Wayne Ronnie. Picks up Zidane. But Zidane starting to fight his way back into this match. Oh, reversal fisherman suplex by Kofi. Picks up Zidane. Zidane is in trouble here because Wayne Ronnie is not back on the apron. If Zidane gets pinned now, there's no help coming. And now we're going to see a double team move, and I think I know what this one is. It's a tag team finisher, the Magic Killer. The Magic Killer. And the ref needs to pin. One, two. Zidane kicks out anyway at two. We need to think of a new name for that. The Magic Killer is the actual real move's name. But if you can think of a good name for that, answer's on a postcard. Oh, nice move by way, uh, Zidane. Takes down Baby Ron. Ruben Semedo on the outside looks on. Don't forget he's heard from last week, so he can't really do much. Irish whip into the corner. Baby Ron is there. Uh-oh. Another finisher here. I think it could be the flying coup de boule. The flying coup de boule from Wayne Ronnie goes for the pin. One. Oh, Kofi was in quickly. The referee didn't even get to a one count, and the ref is down. Kofi rolls outside. Zidane is going to the apron. Oh, because he, he tagged in Wayne Ronnie. 
Baby Ron. Oh, I think Sedan hit Baby Ron in the back there to distract him. Clothesline into the corner by Baby Ron. The ref is back up. Pulls Wayne Rooney out of the corner. Now he's G'ing up the crowd. The shiny bald-headed people trying to get trying to get the crowd on their sides. And now I think he's hulking up. Baby Ron is hulking up. Body splash into the corner. And then a nice body splash takes down Wayne Ronnie. Oh, what's he going for here? He's going for a gorilla press slam, I think. Nice. He goes into a uh, a spine buster. And I think Baby Ron's setting up for a finisher here. He's setting up for the ban hammer. It's the ban hammer. The ban hammer to Wayne Ronnie. Goes for the pin. One, two, but he didn't even get to two. And Wayne Ronnie was in. Baby Ron continues to deal damage to Wayne Ronnie. Irish whip into the corner. Oh, Wayne Ronnie reverses it. Look in the other corner, though. The referee is distracted by uh, Zidane. Not that it really mattered much. Ronnie and Zidane going for another tag move. Kick to the back. Zidane play into the crowd and the crowd booing. They really are booing Zidane and Wayne Ronnie. They really have turned heel here. The crowd do not like them. Baby Ron fights his way out. They're fully behind the shiny bald headed people. Hang on, Baby Ron's a bit confused here. I think Baby Ron's took too many blows to the head. He doesn't really know what he's doing. He's just walking round. What's he doing? What's he doing? <laughs> He's going to pay for that. He's going to pay for that. Because now we're going to see some tag offense from Zidane and Wayne Ronnie. Kick to the front and back. Wayne Ronnie playing to the crowd. But there's the hot tag. The hot tag to Kofi Kingston, who runs in, goes for the drop kick, but misses. He misses. And that could be a big miss. That really could be a big miss because now Wayne Ronnie is hit with two drop kicks and a swinging neck breaker. The shiny bald headed people need to get a win here. And it doesn't look like they're going to. Hang on a minute. Kofi back in. Nice drop kick to the chest. Chop to the chest of Wayne Ronnie. Oh, nice kick. What's he going for here? This is nice technician. Te nice technical move. And then just slams him down with a falcon arrow. Very technical move. That goes for the pin. One, two, three. That's it. They've done it. They've done it with that move. The shiny bald-headed people pick up their first win. Let's be honest, we all wanted to hear that music again. Could this be what these superstars need to get their careers off the road? They needed to team up. They needed to help each other instead of going alone. And that's what they're doing here. The bald-headed people with their first win in the IOWF. And who's to say that this team can't be threatening in the future? This is what he's just showed us. He's been handed this postcard. He's been handed this postcard uh, by uh, the postman who comes to the arena. I think I know what's about to happen here. Let's see what it says on the other side. Whoops, that's not what it says. <laughs> I keep ruining the surprise. Uh, why wouldn't it... Hang on a second. I am 100% certain... 
I'm a hundred percent certain that I set up. Okay, there we go. This is what it says on the other side. Would have loved a match virus, but as you can see, I've got better things to do. See you never, Geo. I mean, how can he get away with this? He can't just not show up to the arena. Like, he can't just not show up to matches. Surely management are going to be unhappy with Geo here. Like, this is just uncalled for. He was supposed to turn up to the arena tonight for a match, and he can't even be bothered to show. He's in Miami sunning himself with with women. <laughs> with women, goddammit. <laughs> like, this is... This is a uh, this is preposterous. I'm sure IOWF management will respond with to this somehow. But I'm being told that Billy Banger <laughs> Come on, have you seen his peaks? Have you seen his arms? Have you seen his arms? He, he, there's, there's no way he's not getting a... He doesn't even take off that helmet, by the way, when he gets in bed with them. Like, he wears that helmet. Uh, when he gets in bed. <laughs> it, it's not even a helmet. It's supposed to be a bandana, but it looks like a helmet. Anyway, I'm being told that Billy Banger has said that he will step in that he's going to step in tonight and wrestle Virus. Now, we haven't seen Billy Banger since he was defeated in the cage match at Genesis. So, Billy Banger with another opportunity to get his singles career off, off the rail, or on the rails, should I say. Virus, of course, is going to be angry. He's the number one contender, and he was looking forward to this non-title match. Yeah, the NW he's trying to build the NWO in uh, IOWF. But uh but there you go. So we're still getting a match. It's just gonna be Virus versus Billy Banger. So that match is coming up right next. Don't go anywhere. Okay, so introducing first. We know who this is it's virus. Five foot nine, 187 pounds. He's one of the lighter uh, characters on the roster. From Turkey, of course. And the number one contender for the European title. Entering for this surprise match against Billy Banger. He thought he was going to be wrestling against Gio Varney tonight, the European champion. But that's not the case. Gio is sunning himself in Miami. And Virus is just going to have to make do with another opponent. You can already tell he's not very happy, but he was already in his ring gear. He's ready to fight, so why not? And of course, we've heard this theme a few times. From Stockholm, Sweden. He is six foot four and he weighs in at 226 pounds. Billy Banger. Billy, interestingly enough, still has that golden arm that he had attached to him for that cage match. Has he been able to fix the problems with that arm since the last time? Well, we're going to have to see. He thought that golden arm was going to give him the upper edge in that match, but it only meant he ended up not being able to climb the cage properly. Here you go. Match four of this evening. I think it is. Let's get it on. 
Virus versus Billy Banger. Virus immediately with a headlock on Billy. Goes for a suplex to Billy Banger. Billy Banger must be a bit heavier now with sporting that golden arm. Nice kick to the chest and then a suplex. A very vicious suplex to Virus. Scoop, sit out scoop slam to Virus. Takes him down to the mat. Nice leg sweep there and went for a kick to the back. But Billy Banger fights out of it. Ooh, nice neck breaker to Virus to take him down. Kick to the back. Virus stands up. Went to run at him, but he was immediately swung over by Billy. Billy looking good so far. Much better than he did in the uh, cage match, let's be honest. What's he going for here? He sits Virus on the top rope. Oh, big knee. That was a that almost looked like a low blow to the chest area by Billy. One. Just a one count. Virus not going to be done that easily. Billy picks Virus up. Irish whip to uh, Virus, but Virus is able to get out of that. Irish whips Billy in turn. Elbow to the back. Turns him round. Kick to the chest. What's he going for here? Virus goes to the middle rope. Nice move by Virus there. Goes for a pin, but he didn't even get to one. Again, Billy himself is going to need more damage to get pinned here. Nice submission move by Virus. Not something you normally see in his locker. Working the neck area of Billy. But Billy just uses that golden arm to just throw Virus over the top of him. Now Billy going to the middle rope. Nice tornado DDT off the middle turnbuckle. Stomp to the chest. Elbow to the back of Virus. Now goes for an early pin on Virus. One. Kick out by Virus. Nobody getting to the two count yet as Billy goes to work on the neck of Virus. Both trying to employ submission moves. Virus is able to get out of it. Doesn't make it count though. Oh, nice power slam by Billy Banger to take Virus down, but still only a one count. Both opponents so far not damaged enough to get that two count. Picks Virus up off the apron. The mat, sorry. Irish whip. Then a flapjack. And that, did you see how high he got? But Virus just no sold it. Big no sell by Virus. Drop kick to the back of Billy. Billy with a right hand takes Virus to the ropes. Virus down to one knee, then down fully. Billy seems to be building some momentum here. Oh, nice. Did you see that? He was playing possum. I think Virus was playing possum. And now he's setting up for something. Hurricane Rana to the ropes. And I think I know what's coming. It's the Turkish Delight. The Turkish Delight takes down Billy. And he goes for the pin. One. Two. Only the two on Billy. But it was Virus playing possum that helped him get back into this match. He lifts an arm to the crowd and the crowd are getting behind him. Lifts Billy off the ground. Billy too strong, no. Belly to belly, no. Virus stopped the belly to belly. He reversed the belly to belly. Irish whip into the corner turnbuckle. Punch to the face. Takes Billy down. Lifts Billy off the floor. Oh, nice. Nice move there. And goes for the pin. One. Kick out at one. Billy is determined not to lose this. I don't think he's been at a two count yet. Maybe, in fact, maybe after the 6-1-9. Virus deciding he needs to start damaging certain parts of Billy Moore. Works the head. Now he just has him in a gator roll and works the midriff of Billy. Picks him up off the floor. Went for a move, but it, Billy stopped it. Chopped to the chest. Punch to the face. One punch takes Billy down. 
Billy fights his way off the floor. Oh, he went for a shoulder charge and Virus reversed it. Billy goes outside to give himself a break. But he didn't give himself long enough. Virus now, oh, nice drop kick to the leg there. Takes down Billy. Goes for the pin. One, two. Billy kicks out after two. Billy just will not stay down. Kick to the back of Billy. Picks up Billy from the floor. And then it is the code breaker. I was waiting for it. And Billy is bleeding. Billy is bleeding. Virus gets up. Doc, sorry, not Doc. Billy tried to get up off the ropes, but Virus stopped him. Billy climbing up the ropes. Virus stopping him, trying to stop him, get up. Virus now, where's he taking him? Where's he taking him? He was taking him to the ropes, but Billy fights his way out. Billy needs to make this count now. Went for a kick to the chest, but Virus reversed it. Oh, a backstabber. Backstabber to Billy. And that could be it. That could be it. One. Two. No, Billy kicks out after a code breaker. A, a, a Turkish delight. And a backstabber. Billy will not stay down. Nice reversal there by Billy to take Virus out. And now he goes to the legs. What is he going for? I think I know what this is. I think I know what this is. He's going for it. It's the helicopter hat. The helicopter hat to Virus. And he's going for it again. He's going for it again. Two helicopter hats. Look how long this one is, though. This one's even longer. Wow. Billy Banger is fired up. And the crowd are chanting, this is awesome. They're into it. They're into this match. Billy now, I think I know he's going for the five moves of doom. He's fired up. That blood seems to have made him fired up. Goes for the pin on Virus. One, two, three. That's it. That is it. Billy Banger, just like that, picks up the win. It has to be said, Billy Banger, uh, he just came alive at the right moment in that match. The two helicopter hats killed Virus off. The first one was a small one. The second one, wow, what a move. He spun him round about six or seven times, maybe even more. Virus, though, I think it's fair to say, was Geo in his head for this match? Don't take anything away from Virus. Virus is the number one contender for the European title. But I think Geo was in his head for this match. And that's why he's lost. He could have won this match. He was in control. He hit a Turkish delight. He hit a code breaker. He hit a backstabber. But he just couldn't make it work. And Billy Banger picks up the victory in this match. Virus, though, Gio is in his head rent-free, and he's going to have to get Gio out of his head if he wants to win that title. Probably talk about... Um... <laughs> you wouldn't believe the things that I've heard. Okay, we're really, we're really, really gonna have to sort out... We're really gonna have to sort out our transmissions. They're being intercepted every week now. What was that? What was that? Who was that?
how are these hackers being able to inter interrupt our transmissions? I, I don't I don't understand. Who? Oh, Jesus. So we had a demonic message last week and we had some some weird hacker guy. I don't know. This week interrupting our streams. But what did he say? Sometimes you have to look at these promos and not, not look at them as a whole. Look at what was said. He said, you wouldn't believe the things that I've heard. What does he mean by that? Hmm. Maybe we'll see. We'll see if that one's a developing story. Ad break. <laughs> I don't do ad breaks. Introducing first from Birmingham, England. He is five, six foot two, sorry, not five foot two. And he's weighing in at 258 pounds. Dutch versus Malcolm, Jobber's world title. <laughs> Dutch Matrix. The Jobber's world title, apparently. You ever played that message? Dutch, of course, thought he was getting a step closer to sleeping with his best friend's wife. If he'd have won that Money in the Bank tight, uh, briefcase, he could have been world champion now. And if he would have got world champion, he would have slept with his best friend's wife. You all know the story by now. But as things stand, he's further away than ever from being able to do that. But if he beats Cardinal Sin tonight... Maybe, maybe we will just about get a bit closer to improving his single standing, and getting himself a title shot. Sheen san, H says, as Valgias, 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 Valgias. <laughs> okay. The arse bulge is real. Every time, look, he's done it again. Every time he comes to the ring, he shits himself. Look at that. Look at that arse bulge. <laughs> I'd be shitting myself as well if I had to wrestle against Cardinal Sin. <laughs> Blood Sky. Blood Sky. I tried to gift you the pack, but it it won't um, work for some reason. For some, I'll write you down. I'll write you down. Blood Sky. There must be a reason why some people. I know I've said that a lot tonight. Here we go. You know that horrible gut wrenching feeling in the arena when this man is in the building. Strange things happen. Horrible things happen. Horrible thoughts happen. And he's here once again to wrestle. From the Cathedral of the Free. He is six foot. Weighing in at 200 and 41 pounds. Cardinal Sin. Cardinal Sin making the fires of hell appear themselves in the arena. Makes his way slowly to the ring. It's a very cerebral entrance. The heat of the fires the audience can feel and certainly his opponent can feel. But there's something different about Cardinal Sin this week that I've only just noticed. Look at all the scars on Cardinal Sin's body. 
What the? Where the hell have all them scars come from? Deep, deep gashes on the body of Cardinal Sin. Look at that. Something has absolutely tore the peck area of Cardinal Sin to shreds. Sprinkler system activate TSTSTSTSTSTSTSTSTSTSTSTSTSTSTSTSTSTSTSTSTSTSTSTSTSTSTSTSTSTSTSTSTSTSTSTSTSTSTSTSTSTSTSTSTSTSTSTSTSTS
Are we going to see another count out here tonight? Cardinal Sin, no, Cardinal Sin's not done with him. He's not done with Dutch. He rolls him into the ring. Kick to the back. Drags him over to the side there. Goes for the pin, and he's gone for a cheat pin. He went for a cheat pin, but it didn't work. It didn't work. But it doesn't matter because he's lifted them up again. What's he going for? No. Dutch Matrix fights out. I think Cardinal Sim was going for a move there. And now Dutch Matrix with a sit-out spine buster. Dutch Matrix all of a sudden back in this match. Dutch Matrix taking the turnbuckle pad off. We're seeing two cheaters in this match. We really are. And now Dutch is setting up for a move. What's he going for? I think it could be the glitch in the Matrix. Glitch in the Matrix and he's made Cardinal Sim bleed. Goes for the pin. One, two. He kicks out of the glitch in the Matrix. I can't believe it. I thought that was it. I thought the glitch. Wait, the, the, the referee's putting the pad back on. Meanwhile, the match is still going on. Oh, I think, I think Dutch Matrix went for a low blow. I think Dutch Matrix went for a low blow. And then Cardinal Sin's finisher has just been reversed. Uh, too many reversals in this match. Cardinal Sin and Dutch Matrix are giving it everything that they've got. Both cheating to win. Nice move by Dutch Matrix, takes down Cardinal Sin to the mat. I think this match is going to be coming to a close. A headbutt from Dutch Matrix, a fireman's carry suplex by Cardinal Sin. European uppercut, drop kick takes down Dutch Matrix. This is turning into a good match. Dutch Matrix, Cardinal Sin saying it's over, but let's see if he can finish it. Dutch Matrix stands up on the apron. Nice right hand takes Dutch Matrix down to the arena floor. Cardinal Sin with Dutch Matrix in his hand. Takes him, bounces his head off the announce table. Lifts him up again. What's he going for here? He went to hoist Dutch Matrix onto his shoulder, but Dutch Matrix goes into the Russian leg sweep. The count of four. Dutch gets back in the ring. He's saying, get up. He wants Cardinal Sin to get back in the ring. Look, he's telling him, get back in, get back in. Cardinal Sin makes his way slowly to his feet. Oh, that's smart. It's smart from Cardinal Sin. It is, it's really smart. Went for a move, but Dutch reverses it into a suplex. I thought Cardinal Sin was smart there, but it looks like Dutch was just a little bit smarter. Irish whip into the corner. Dutch Matrix now goes over, and I think he could be setting up for something here. Oh, he's just... Oh, look at that. Just brutally bashing the body of Cardinal Sin off the turnbuckle. Cardinal Sin fights out, but then goes for the dropkick and misses. And that could be crucial. That could really be crucial. Slams the head of Cardinal Sin off the turnbuckle. Oh, and look, Cardinal Sin is busted open, and that's got to hurt. He's bashing the head off the turnbuckle. Cardinal Sin goes down to the apron. And now, this could be it. He's setting up for a finisher. This could be it. No! Cardinal Sin reverses it! He was going for another glitch in the Matrix. And now Cardinal Sin is setting up for his own finisher. This could be it! I think he's going for it again. He's going for it. The eternal damnation! Matrix is down, goes for the pin. One, two, three, and Cardinal Sin. Look at a bloody mess on his face. Picks up the victory. What a match. What a match that turned out to be. I didn't really have high hopes for this match, but this was probably the best match of tonight. Look at that, the cheating tactics were on show. Cardinal Sin went for that. Dutch Matrix went to take the turnbuckle pad off and then he went for a low blow, but he missed it.
Blood Sky. <laughs> yeah, Blood Sky does look good on his face. But that was a good match. Cardinal Sin picking up his first singles win. <laughs> and you've got to say, he needed to win. He really needed to win. But for Dutch Matrix, the mission to sleep with his best friend's wife just carries on and on and on. At the moment, Blood Skies, but I'm going to look into it. I've wrote your name down. Don't worry. Okay. Introducing first. From uh, Rome, Italy and Livorno, Italy, respectively. Five foot nine, six foot three. You know the drill. It's the Alpha Males. Now, the Alpha Males had a really, really good performance in the tag tournament and we're very unlucky due to oh, a clear head injury to marco beretta uh why they couldn't see that match out because marco beretta cl climbed the ladder about three times in the match and i was convinced he was taking the belts but they didn't take the belts and the sword and dragons were the ones to come away with the tag titles but tonight they get a chance to show that they're still one of the top tag teams by coming up against the two powerhouses. Did it did it did it. And the next two, they don't need any introduction, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Introducing first. Hang on a second. That's not Billy Heddington's music, is it? I think Billy Heddington's got new music. And he comes in on his motorbike from New York. He is six foot one, weighing in at 256 pounds. Billy Harrington, Anarchy, Anarchy. The crowd all chant for their favorite. The biggest baby face in the IOWF, it has to be says, said. Freshly oiled. Blue wa blue wash jeans, black vest. You know the drill. And of course, another person who needs no introduction from Seda Kroke, Iceland. He is five foot nine, and he weighs in. At 295 pounds. Bjorn! Bjornsson! The Viking entering the arena in his very showman-like entrance as usual. Look at that Conor McGregor-like strut down to the ring full of confidence and who's to blame him he's had some very impressive performances in the iowf so far but he'll be the first to admit that the elimination chamber did not go to plan for him to at all being eliminated by his arch nemesis billy herrington i would say wife beater is a heel at the moment he's not a jobber they had some good tag performances they're not in the job a lot just yet. I'm excited for this one. Tornado tags are just constant action. They don't have to tag each other on the apron. They just go at it. Here we go. The alpha males look ready, but so do Billy and Bjorn. Let's get it on. Tornado tag. Looks like the Viking goes straight for Wife Beater 
to teach him some manners, it seems. Meanwhile, Billy and Marco Beretta exchange hands on the other side. Drop kick by Marco Beretta takes down Billy. Meanwhile, Bjorn is Russian leg sweeped. We see that move so often from Wife Beater. It's like his favorite move. It should be called the Italian leg sweep by now. Marco Beretta kicks off Billy. Looks like the Alpha Male started this well. They've got both of these men down on the mat. And we wouldn't expect anything less. They do work really well as a tag team. Fun fact, yeah, Billy and Bjorn both use the testicular, testicular claw as a move, but Bjorn has it as a finisher. Billy only has it as a signature. So there you go. Varying degrees of damage. Looks like Billy is back on his feet, but not for long. Wife Beater is laying into the Viking here. Kicks to the face by Wife Beater to the Viking. The Viking all of a sudden is back in this. Nice roundhouse kick. Billy starting to get back in against Marco, but not for long. The Viking is going for something. A big move. What's he going for here? On Wife Beater. Oh, wow, what a move by the Viking. What a move. But Wife Beater just no-sells it. <laughs> It never looks good when they no-sell it like that. Kicks to the face by Marco to Billy. And if he does many more of them, Billy's going to have a crimson mask. <clears throat> Viking went for a drop kick. Sorry, uh, wife beater. But he missed it. He's still on top, though, there. Billy with a nice reversal against Marco. Picks Marco up, but Marco reverses it. The Italians looking very good here. Look at this, tandem kicks to the back. It's, it's, it's almost uncanny how well they work together as a team. Marco throws Billy out to the apron and pushes him off to the arena floor. And now we're going to see some outside of the ring action and there's a pin outside. One, two, three. Oh, come on. Come on, WWE. <laughs> come on. You can give me a better match than that. I can't even pretend. <laughs> I can't even pretend. <laughs> I can't even pretend that was a good match. <laughs> oh, Jesus, this job's not easy, I'll tell you that. The Italians with a a win uh, Billy was just pushed to them to the the floor <laughs> what was the Viking celebrating while the pin was going on my <laughs> state is beaten how I don't understand how he was able to pin off all he did was push Billy off the apron. That surely shouldn't do enough damage. I don't know. Very, very uh, strange. Okay, here we go. We'll see, Blood Sky. We'll see. Um, we know this is... With his new intro music... From New York, six foot one, 256 pounds, Billy Harrington. Yeah, Blood Sky, um, the main issue I can think of is how long it took to set all this up. I mean, I don't know when 2K22 is coming out, so maybe by then we'll be happy to switch over to it, but. It took quite a while to set all this up on 2K19. Like, like two weeks of work, something like that. It's whether I can be bothered doing that again. We'll see. We'll see. To be honest, it might be worth doing it because it, the game will be popular. So we'll get more people in. Okay.
Introducing second from Seder Kroker, Iceland. He is five foot nine and weighing in at 295 pounds. Bjorn! Bjorn, sir! So, Bjorn. This is in an alternate universe. We're getting another match. <laughs> What we could say is, like, whoever wins this, you know, we, we'll keep it in mind, you know, because this will be a difficult match for for whoever these are to win. Here we go. From Liverpool, UK, seven foot four, 130 pounds. We know who it is by now. We've seen this man, the arrogant man, as he's known, enter many, many times. And his entrance probably takes up more than some matches go on. He makes a slow walk to the ring. Interesting that Freya is not in his in his corner. No Freya in McFaggle's corner. So that might be one thing to uh, keep an eye on. Because you would have thought with him winning last week that Freya would have been in his corner tonight. But maybe she thinks that Eric Tao needs some extra work. No innuendo intended. Or maybe she's heard that she's going to have to manage Malcolm next week and she's working overtime. Because <laughs> that's a hard case to manage. Somebody knocking? I've had a few drinks now, so now I'm like, that sounded like so real. This is Flames Wrestler. It's, it sounds so real, doesn't it? That knock. <laughs> that was... You planned that one well. <laughs> and we're still waiting for McFaggle's entrance to finish. He's worse than the Undertaker. Cena laughs in the face of death. Lemma oro for oro for lol lol ha 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 ha. Now speaking of the Undertaker, from Caracas. Venezuela. We haven't seen him for a while. He's six foot four. Weighing in at 190 pounds. It's the Reaper. James Navas. Now, James Navas was actually in that Money in the Bank match. But, of course... He didn't come out on top in that match. But the, for James Navas, his intentions in the IOWF are not really known. Whether that disappointed him or not, no one can be sure. He keeps to himself. Nobody really speaks to him. But one thing's for sure, when this man enters the ring, he's got a presence that no one can ignore.
The competitors stand round the ring to keep an eye on this guy. I love the way they take up position like that. It's like, oh, I've got to stand here now. <laughs> okay, we're all ready for our pseudo main event of the night. If that's the right terminology. <laughs> Let's get it on. Fatal four-way tables match. Billy leaves the ring immediately. Billy's not wasting any time. He's grabbed, he's grabbed a Golden chair already. Golden Flame is so hyped, they got horny. But Mac Faggle stopped him. Wait, what's going on? What, 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 what was that? Did you just see that? They, like, moonwalked? God, this game is a fucking joke, isn't it? <laughs> I don't, I don't know. Uh, Russian leg sweep by McFaggle to Billy. Meanwhile, James Navas and the Viking battle on the right-hand side of the ring. Oh, nice by Billy to just throw McFaggle into the stairs. Coffin match. I, do you know what? That's one thing you can't have in this game. Believe it or not. Oh, nice move by the Viking to just bounce the head of James Navas off the apron. McFaggle and Billy climb back into the ring. McFaggle with the Irish whip into the corner. Billy says no and just clotheslines him down. McFaggle gets outside, though. Inside the ring, the Viking with a knee to the chest and a drop kick just to take James Navas down. Chop to the chest. Outside, Billy Harrington has McFaggle in his hands, but McFaggle is able to elbow his way out with them big long arms. Billy Harrington's back in control, though, of that situation. Meanwhile, the Viking is just destroying James Navas in, in, the, in the ring. And hang on, Billy, uh, the Viking is grabbing a table. He's looking to finish this one early. He's got a table. Billy sees it. Billy sees it, and he's trying to stop it, and he does stop it. There we go. The AI doing something smart. He turns round the Viking and throws him over the top rope. Finally, the AI doing something right. McFaggle, um, McFaggle doesn't really know what to make of the Reaper, but he does pick up the table, but not for long. Meanwhile, the arch enemies on the outside bounces the head of Billy off the steps. McFaggle and the Reaper. Reaper now finally getting some offense in against McFaggle. Body splash. The Viking bounces Billy's head off the announce table, but Billy fights back. Pat, Pat plays MC, or Pat plays Mac. Thank you for the follow, my friend. James Navas rolls outside the ring. McFaggle, he's got stars above his, above his crown. Look at that. You can see the stars above his head. <laughs> The Viking picked the table up, but decided against it. He's, uh, he hasn't finished doing damage to the Viking. He's going to do his best attempt at a Stone Cold promo. Do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get beer. What two beers? What three beers? What I'm going to have a whole bottle of tequila, you sons of bitches. And I'm going to stomp a mud hole in your ass. And that's the bottle line, because Stone Cold said so. Thank you, Pat. That was, that was great to read. <laughs> um, the Viking went for a drop kick on on McFaggle but missed. Billy now has the the Reaper in the corner. Turns him round. McFaggle with the stumps to the chest of the Viking. Oh, there it is! It's the Death and Taxes Stunner! The Death and Taxes Stunner has just took down Billy. <laughs> Tet4 is hungry for more wrestling. Nom nom. Now the Viking pushes down the Reaper. The Viking looking to capitalize on the situation. Billy has just been hit with the death and taxes. Uh-oh. The Viking has grabbed the table. The Viking has got the table. He hits the Reaper with it. Billy, though, is back to his feet, and so is McFaggle. McFaggle and Billy are back in the ring. The table is set up. 
That table is set up. McFaggle takes the Viking over to the table and they're going to have to stop McFaggle because he's looking to steal the match. He takes the Viking over to the table. He grabs him, but the Viking fights his way off. Nice Hurricane Rana from McFaggle. Billy picks up the Reaper. Meanwhile, the Viking rolls out of the ring. Billy. Oh, what a body splash by Billy there. Billy, what's he going for? I think Billy is going through a, cut, a comeback and a nice kick up. Kip up. And did you see that? McFaggle went for a Hurricane Rana. But Billy, with the power bomb, all Billy has to do is set the table up. The Viking and Billy working together against McFaggle. Oh, hang on, he's got the claw in. He's got the testicular claw in the dungeon master lock. Uh-oh. Billy Herrington's up against the table. Chopped to the chest. The Reaper turns round. The Viking puts him against the table. Chopped to the chest. It could be anyone. Anyone could win this now. They really could. Russian leg sweep to the Reaper. That table is still set up in the corner. James Navas now in the corner. McFaggle waiting, thinking. McFaggle is thinking. Maybe that should be the next emoji that we haven't uploaded yet. <laughs> thinking. Uh-oh, McFaggle with the Irish whip to the Viking in the corner. Chopped to the chest. Billy gets back in. Billy went, oh, Billy went for the fist and, and a, did he hit it? No, he went for the fist and he hits the Reaper. Billy hits the Reaper with the fist and, and he rolls the Viking over to the table. Chopped to the chest. Billy must have a finisher now. He must do. No, wait, that was his finisher. Hits the Reaper. The Reaper Irish whips Billy to the corner. I think a finish is going to be soon. Chopped to the chest. Billy falls to the floor. That's right, yeah, the Fiston is his finisher. Billy with a face plant. McFag what's McFag <laughs> what's McFaggle doing? <laughs> what's he doing? Uh, McFaggle's walking into the corner. And the Reaper just hits him down. <laughs> The Viking. The Viking gets back in. Oh, hang on. The Viking is setting the table up in the middle. Billy is resting on the apron, but that's not good because the Viking grabs him. Suplex into the ring. Oh, my God. He puts him. Oh, my God. Wow. Uh, the Viking puts Billy through the table. Wow. I've not seen that before, actually. That was quite good. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually really impressed with that. I didn't think the AI did things like that. But that ended up being a good match. So I hope that made up for the, uh, the terrible... Limac Reds just got RKO'd out of nowhere. The terrible main event. I hope that made up for that. <laughs> and yeah, there's nothing riding on this, so if you lost, don't worry. But the Vikings showing he had the ring awareness. He set the table up. <laughs> well, yeah, that's the story. That's the story, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, McFaggle. McFaggle, we had him walking into a corner aimlessly and we had him think, doing his normal thinking. Bjorn is insane. Yeah, well... Most people thought he was going to win the title and I can understand that because he, 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 he has been insane. Um, somebody clipped that table finisher, by the way, because that, that's, that's a moment.